Welcome to Learn Right. Uh, we are starting our lesson today. And today we are on, uh, we are doing integrated chemistry or core chemistry. It's the same. Uh, or it's coming from the integrated science. We already know the integrated science is made up of four aspects. The core chemistry, core biology, core agricultural science, and the core physics. So these four come together to make up the integrated science. So today we are on integrated science core chemistry. And I'm saying that in our first day of reporting in the science lab when we enter a school, there are safety precautions that are given to every student to obey. Why? Because in the science lab we deal with chemicals, most especially the chemistry laboratory. Therefore, you might think, oh, I, I went to the lab or I go to the lab and I find a bottle of water. I am thirsty. Then I take up this water and drink. It might not be a water, or it might not be water as you think. What we are saying is that one of the laboratory or safety precautions says that we don't drink in the lab or we don't eat in the lab. This is the reason. You can see in front of me three petri dishes. These petri dishes contain some kinds of liquids. Meanwhile, they are not colorful. They are all plain. But I have in my hand a pH scale or the litmus paper that we always refer to. This paper is going to tell us something. I am just picking a leaflet from a bunch of this litmus paper. Now, I am putting this in the first liquid so that we see. So I dip it here. And wonderfully, there's a color change. The yellow paper has turned into blue, meaning a reaction has taken place. So this liquid that we see is not water. If you are not careful and it is in the bottle, you will drink. That is why we say you don't drink in the laboratory or you don't eat in the lab. This has taken place as a result of the fact that what we have in this petri dish is not water. This has turned into blue, telling you we have a liquid substance called a base. We have a liquid substance called a base. So that is it. Then I am putting it down. I am going for another leaflet. Uh, without much ado, I dip it into the next Petri dish. And what do we see? The yellow paper has turned into red or pink. Let's take it so. It means this liquid also it is a different liquid all together, telling us that it is an acid per the color that is being displayed on the screen that you see. Good. I have my third liquid, and I'm going for another uh, leaflet of the litmus uh, paper, and I put it in this last liquid. And it's like I am seeing green. Green refers to neutrality of a liquid, meaning this is water. But what I want you to know is that all these three liquids that we have here has no color. They are all plain. So imagine they are all in a bottle. And as a student, you feel thirsty and then you take one and drink. If you are not careful, you might drink an acid. And an acid we all know, we have heard, as we are going to talk about, is corrosive. It can, I mean, do a lot of damages on every living organism. So... That is it. So for that matter, our topic for today is acids, bases, and salts. Now, we are starting with acids. We are starting with acids. So we take acids as our subtopic. Acids first. That is what we are going to look at. Now, there are three concepts about these acids. Authorities of the subject area have come out with three concepts. Three people have defined acids. One of them is called Ahenius. The other is called Bronsted Lorry. And the last person we, have, we will talk about is Lewis. Now, Waik has a way of asking her questions. When Waik question says define an acid, it means the student is not restricted. Any of the three holds, and you will get it. But immediately, why is specific, 
and mention how does Bronstein Lorry define his asset. And you define it anyhow without going through what Bronstein Lorry has said. You are wrong. Now, from the chief examiner's report, nowadays, Wyeck is even interested in Bronstein Lorry's definition. When you are asked what is an asset, Wyeck takes interest in Bronstein Lorry's definition. Now, we are going to look at this definition or this concept one by one. Now, Ahenius, what does Ahenius say? Ahenius says that, you can see on the screen, uh, an acid is a compound or substance that dissociates in water or in aqueous solution to produce hydrogen ion or hydrozonium ion. And you can see on the screen, an example of acid has been given there, which is H2SO4. This acid has an IOPAC name. The IOPAC name is tetraozosulfasic acid, and the common name is sulfuric acid. You could see that in aqueous solution, it has dissociated, and we have the H plus and the SO4 two minus. The H plus is the acid. So whenever you have liquid, uh, a liquid of this kind in solution, and it dissociates to give you this, then it is an acid. Per the definition, it is an ahenous acid. Who says, once again, an acid is a compound that, or a substance that dissociates in water or aqueous solution to produce a hydrogen ion or hydrozonium ion. Please, whenever you hear of hydrogen ion, it's the same as hydrozonium ion. Or whenever you hear of hydrozonium ion, it's the same as hydrogen ion. Let me do some little illustration here. We have water. Water is H2O. If I am adding H+, plus, then now it becomes H3O+. Plus. So the proton has been added. And this is what Ahenius is saying. So either this or that, hydrozonium ion, this is a hydrogen ion, or hydrozonium ion, please, is the same thing. It represents acid. This is how Ahenius defined his acids. Now, let's look at the second concept, which is bronsted lorry bronsted lorry says, an acid is a proton donor. See, uh, somebody might ask, what, who is a donor? There are people who are always at the hospital donating blood. The one donating blood is a donor, and the one receiving the blood is a recipient. Now, a proton donor, meaning you are donating a proton. Somebody might ask, why is it that the H plus is called proton? Hydrogen is the first element on the periodic table as you learned or as you have learned in matter. Now, it is number one. The number one tells you that it has only one proton, and proton is positively charged. So in an ionic state, or in its reaction state, it becomes H+. plus. H+, plus represents the, uh, the, 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 the proton. So an acid is on the screen now, called HCl, hydrochloric acid. Now, this acid in solution, HCl in solution, breaks down as H+, plus, plus Cl mi minus. This is hydrogen ion and chloride ion. The hydrogen ion is called a proton. Proton. So, what Bronsted Lorry is saying is that if you donate a proton, you are an acid. So, HCl has donated a proton. So, it is an acid. This is the very definition I was telling you from Chief Examiner's report why it is interested in this definition also. If you are not restricted and you see, define an acid and say an acid is a proton donor, it is accepted. Now we look at the third concept. It's called Lewis concept. This man defined acid in another way. He says that an acid is a species that is capable of accepting a lone pair of electrons. Please, a pair of shoes, a pair of shorts, a pair of uh, trousers. Anything pair means it is two. So if you are able to donate two electrons 
from Lewis concept, you are an acid. So an acid is a species that is capable of accepting, sorry, of accepting a lone pair of electrons. So the one donating is different from the one accepting. From Lewis concept, if you accept a lone pair of electrons, which is two electrons, then you are an acid. So, so far, we have learned the three concepts of acid. The Brahenius definition, Bronsted Lorry's definition, and then Lewis concept. All these three definitions represent acids as we have seen. It. 